Hi, everyone. Um, we would like to introduce Bryce Coleman to you all. We're super excited to have him here today. Um, a little bit about Bryce before he gets started. Um, so Bryce is an alumni of BYU-Hawaii, graduated in 2019 with a degree in intercultural peace building and a minor, minor in entrepreneurship. Um, while attending BYU-Hawaii, he started not one, but three businesses. And he now has his own marketing agency that he started just this past April. So take it away, Bryce. We're excited to have you on today. Thanks. So Bryce, before you go, I just want to throw, and I should warn Sophie and Logan of this. Generally, if I know the speaker, I also like to throw in a few things here. As Sophie said, Bryce is a former student here. We love to get uh, former students in because you guys hear of all these like crazy wealthy successful people that are 40 years older than you and you're just like yeah maybe someday and Bryce you graduated at the beginning of last year right or was it end of 2019 end of 2019 that's right so Bryce absolute super entrepreneur did amazing things while he was here at BYU Hawaii but my favorite story about Bryce Okay, Bryce has probably one of the biggest hearts of anybody I've met and also a person who lives what he says. And Bryce was all about working on the homeless situation out here on the North Shore. And as I've shared in some of the other classes, you can get money to do a project. And we had funded one of Bryce's project and he's the only student to date to come to me and say, Brother Wilson, they were going to Maui, I think. They're like, he's like, Brother Wilson, we're wondering if we could, I don't know what you wanted to use the money for, for the hotel. He's like, we don't want the hotel. We want to go stay with the homeless, which was not an yeah. uncommon thing for Bryce. Bryce often would go just spend the night with the homeless and really get to know them. And I'm like, as different of a request as that, that is, I'm pretty sure that the legal department of the school would have issues with me allowing a student to do a school activity and go stay with the homeless. So uh, it was something I had to deny, but it was not uncommon for something that uh, Bryce and also Scott, his partner, they were yeah. always really getting to putting real faces to uh, the struggle that the homeless had. So that, and that was just one element of, that was one of his businesses, but he did multiple ones. So I just wanted to add a little bit more to his bio. I had you in, I think four classes. So yeah. I didn't really know Bryce. You, you taught me a lot of my, my entrepreneurship stuff. It's a lot of fun. So well, thank you for the kind you, words. Bryce. Yeah, so um, I because I'm still kind of in the student mode, you know, I didn't, I'm very much of a procrastinator. I didn't really prepare anything. Just figured we'd talk <laughs> and uh, see so you guys. I mean, I don't know how far along you guys are. Is everyone here in marketing or entrepreneurship or you want to run your own business? What, what kind of uh, careers are you guys looking into in the future uh, in the next couple of years after you graduate? So I know, um, at least I see, I'm a TA and I see a couple of mix of people. I see people just from the business communications class as well as um, upper level of the marketing strategy classes. So oh. we have a little bit of a mix of everything right now. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Marketing, communications, it's all super useful stuff. Well, cool, yeah. I mean, I guess I'll give a bit of a background on myself. Um, so when I graduated uh, 2019, I think it was in April of 2019, so it's been a, over a year and a half or so now. Um, so at the time when I was in BYU, I, I'd started three businesses, like they said, but um, all three of them got their funding and startup money from Great Ideas competitions and Empower Your Dreams competitions. So I didn't have any money to spend on them. Um, and so like my first business was a van rental company called it Van Life in Paradise. And uh, it came from just realizing that like housing prices are so expensive in Hawaii. And so there's such a shortage of, of Airbnbs and, and markets and people are paying so much money for hotels. So I, I just started a van rental company and started on Airbnb and pitched that idea, great ideas. And then they, I won. And so then I started that business. 
And it's just always been really fun. That was my first entrepreneurial experience. And ever since then, I've always been looking around for these kind of opportunities where there's a really high demand. Uh, and, you know, like in Hawaii, there was such a huge demand for hotels or, or vacation rentals, as, as well as equipment. You know, I, it, not only did I, I give them a, a van, but they also, you know, they had a rental car, a place to stay, snorkeling gear, a, a private tour of the island. I do a circle island tour for them when they come to the island. So they know like everything on the island, you know, so that was all in one package for them. And ever since then, I realized, wow, there's opportunities all over the place for businesses. Uh, like the, the second company I started was a, a car rental business because there's so many iWork students who aren't allowed to own cars, you know, and there's so many crappy broken cars in Hawaii. So I decided to learn how to fix cars, bought a bunch of broken cars, fixed them all, and then rented them to BYU students. And it was super fun, you know, just 35 bucks a day. But if you have four of those a day, it's 140 bucks and you don't have to do much work besides cleaning them. Um, so it was a lot of, a lot of fun. And I really missed it. So in, um, when coronavirus happened, I, I ended up having to shut up, down both those businesses, which is good for me because I'd gotten kind of lazy because um, both of those had become pretty much passive income. And uh, I wasn't really working anywhere. I was just playing with the homeless and doing you know, my nonprofit stuff. I didn't have any like real job for like almost a year and a half, um, maybe two years since I quit Kualoa Ranch. And uh, I'd gotten pretty, pretty lazy as far as that goes. Uh, but when coronavirus happened, I shut down, had to shut down both those businesses, didn't have any more income. And so I got married and moved with my wife to Arizona to hopefully find uh, a more stable income and a, a real job, you know, the big boy life uh, instead of just playing in Hawaii. And what I found is uh, as a peace building major and entrepreneurship major, I didn't really have... Um, any marketable skills that I wanted to use uh, or that businesses were hiring for. Well, that's not true. I, I got hired like every single job I applied for. I applied for five jobs and I got hired for all of them, um, but they weren't interesting jobs. They're super boring. I, I quit all of them. I, I'd stay, start a job for two weeks and I'm like, oh man, this is so boring. And so then I'd quit. And then I'd get hired in another job because I'd feel bad about not working. And I don't know what it is. For some reason, after like running businesses for a little bit, of time, I, I got so much entrepreneurial spirit in my blood that just working for other people and doing mundane jobs got super boring and just could not satisfy me very well. Not only like, are you just working for someone else and the money's not great, but also like you don't feel as passionate or I didn't feel as passionate or fulfilled. I didn't feel like I was really doing my purpose in life uh, and fulfilling what I wanted to do in my life. And so I started trying to figure out, all right, well, now I'm in Arizona, what's the market like here? Like in Hawaii, it's so easy to start a business because you have the tourism market, it's huge. You have, you know, crappy cars everywhere. People need to fix cars. You have, you could be a wedding photographer all year round. You know, there's so many people getting married at BYU Hawaii. It's easy. You could do a haircutting stylist, you know, BYU Hawaii market alone, you can have tons of businesses, uh, let alone the Hawaii market of tourism. And so it's so easy over there. But in Arizona, it was a lot more spaced out. And I didn't know anything about the market. Um, so I decided uh, what, what ended up happening actually is I thought about my time at BYU Hawaii in the entrepreneurial department. And I thought back to every one of the teachers, not all of them, there's, but a lot of the teachers at BYU Hawaii, the, especially the couple missionaries, um, those guys, they're all retired at like 30 as millionaires. I was like, holy cow, you know, like uh, Ryan and, and, you know, brother Wilson, let's see. Uh, Brother Josh Dalton, Ryan Chaffin, Brother Wilson, Corey Blake, et cetera, you know, all those guys, they had run SEO agencies or digital marketing agencies prior to being a teacher. And most of them, you know, they retired young because they were rich and they didn't have to keep working their whole lives. And so I thought like, man, I really need to learn more about this SEO stuff because um, I don't want to be just slaving away my whole life. I want to retire early and, and go serve a couple mission or, or you know, have freedom to, to travel because it seemed really appealing as, as I started researching more about digital marketing, I realized that it, it meets all the qualifications of what I wanted to do in my life. I wanted to travel. You know, I've already been to 40 countries now uh, while I was going to school. I travel every break, but I, I want to like live abroad and, and live in the Philippines, live in Thailand, live in Europe uh, as I work. And so I wanted to find a job that would allow me to work wherever I want in the world. And I also wanted to find a job that I would be able to help people's lives. I knew that I couldn't really make a living off of a nonprofit like I had been running in Hawaii. 
but I wanted something that really makes an impact on people. And I found that uh, the more I learned about digital marketing is you're able to really change businesses and small business owners' lives and, and grow their business an exponential amount um, through digital marketing. And you're able to do it anywhere in the world as long as you have a laptop. And so I, I decided to quit my job, or I didn't quit my job actually, uh, invest really heavily in learning digital marketing because I didn't study it at all in college. I know we have advanced digital marketing and marketing courses and I was kicking myself I was like, man, I really wish I'd taken those when I was a BYU Hawaii. Um, what a big missed opportunity, I guess. But I, I, I spent like almost $10,000 on uh, marketing courses, uh, web, web design courses, Facebook ad courses, YouTube ad courses, SEO, backlinking uh, courses, everything. Um, all, all sorts of different courses and, and online classes and stuff. And I took those uh, while I was working at this, uh, as a mechanic, I forgot what it's called. I was working for Intel pretty much and repairing their equipment and stuff. It was kind of boring, but that, that company was nice because they listen, let me listen to headphones. So I could listen to the audio, the audio of the classes while I was working for 12 hours a day and audible books. So I, I listened to like a hundred books in three months and all my classes information, but I didn't have time or energy to really apply uh, all the stuff I was learning because I was working 12 hours a day and I, I couldn't quit my job because, you know, I can't survive and support my family without an income. So I got kind of stuck, you know, I had all these dreams and ideas of running a marketing business, but no time to really do it. So what I ended up doing is I, uh, I hired my first virtual assistant, which if you've ever read the book, four hour work week, um, it's a super good book really inspiring. It talks about how to pretty much outsource everything in your life and uh, live live abroad or whatever. But um, anyway, so I, I bought, I got a virtual assistant in the Philippines. His name was Zax. He had just graduated high school, studied IT a little bit, and he didn't speak much English at all. But um, I, he, I asked him like, hey man, how much do you want an hour to be an intern? And I'll teach you all the stuff that I know because I have all these courses. He's like, oh, I'll do it for free, man. I just want to learn stuff. I was like, oh, it's okay. And, and so I ended up paying him like four bucks an hour, or whatever. And uh, pretty much what I did is while I was working at work, uh, he was taking my classes that I'd bought and applying them. He was actually practicing building websites and practicing doing SEO on different sites and stuff, just as practice. And then I was able to start prospecting while I was at work and then I'd find clients and then he'd do the fulfillment, but I'd still be working full time at my other job. And I ended up doing that until I had two or three virtual assistants fully trained to be able to do the whole thing of web design, SEO, Google business listing optimizations, all sorts of other stuff that we offered. And once I had them trained, uh, then I went really hard in prospecting and started getting bigger clients um, and, and until I was able to, to quit my job and, and do it full time. And now a couple months later, so that I quit my job in October and just started doing it full time for the past three months. But in three months, we've gained like, on average, I'm getting two new clients a week. Uh, so we've gotten like 16 clients in the last two months. And each client, on average, we get about uh, $5,000 from them up front, anywhere from $2,000 to $5,000 up front. And then anywhere from $200 a month to $1,500 a month for the monthly SEO and marketing. And so it's been really good. We've grown a ton in the last few months. And what was really interesting though, is uh, what stopped me for a long time is I was learning these courses for like four or five months and I had trained employees that they were ready to go and we shouldn't have any clients because um, I wasn't confident in, in our abilities. And I also was scared that they would, I don't have credentials, you know, I don't have a degree in digital marketing. I don't have proof. I don't have case studies. I don't have anything like that. And um, so I, I ended up coming up with my own prospecting method where I didn't need any of that stuff. I, what, what it ended up being was um, I focus on educating them. So uh, most business owners don't understand very much about marketing, uh, especially digital marketing and SEO. They have a website and they sometimes run ads themselves, um, but there's a lot of missed opportunities that they, they just don't know is out there. And so what I ended up doing, uh, my first client, my first big one, um, there it was actually somebody who was trying to hire me as a solar sales consultant. They wanted me to start a business in solar sales, which actually it was kind of down to do. I was like, oh, that sounds entrepreneurial. I'll start a solar business for you. It was a roofing company that wanted to start a new solar business. Um, 
But I, I ended up going back to them after turning them down and said, hey, uh, I know you guys want to start a solar business. Do you need a website for your solar business? And then they're like, yeah, we do. And I was like, oh, also, I looked at your uh, roofing business and your insurance business. They have three businesses. And I was like, I know that you guys don't have any organic traffic to your website because I have tools that can tell how much traffic uh, is coming to each site and what keywords they're ranking for. Like you guys aren't ranked on page one for any, any keyword at all uh, because your website isn't optimized. And so they're like, oh, really? And so I shot them a video and did an audit of their website and told them all the things that they need to change and explain to it in detail so they could do it themselves. I said, hey man, these are the steps you have to do to rank your website. And if you do that, you'll be able to rank uh, number one, you know, on for all these different keywords. And if you rank number one, this is the amount of search volume you can expect. And so I just kind of gave away all the information about SEO uh, to them. And then uh, it made a lot of sense to them. They're like, oh wow, we've, we've paid $25,000 in the last two years uh, to digital marketers and we've gotten nothing from it like we haven't gotten a single phone call and we don't have any results and we don't know what they've done with all the money i was like oh wow that's really bad but that, that's actually a trend in digital marketing i have found like almost all my clients have said they've paid oh yeah we pay like three thousand dollars a month we've gotten never gotten anything that's pretty pretty crazy how many scams there are in digital marketing kind of sad but but that's what makes it so different about me and my style is um i really just focus on educating them and then they can either take it and do it themselves or tell their marketer to do it, or they can say like, hey man, this is a lot of work, I don't wanna do it myself, so how about you do it for me? And then they're asking you for advice or asking you for help. And from with that way, they don't ever ask for case studies. They don't ever ask, I don't even have a website for my own business. <laughs> I haven't had time to make one. I've been too busy just working on clients' websites and clients' SEO campaigns and clients' Facebook ads that I haven't even made one for my own magnet marketing SEO company, which is kind of ironic because I'm a web design company without a web website. <laughs> Uh, but at some point, you know, I'll have time to build one um, when I'm not scaling so fast and training employees all the time. Um, but it's super, super good because then it, I don't have to worry about credentials. You know, I haven't had anyone ask me for uh, to see previous work or to to talk to clients because they they understand what SEO, how, how it works. And I explain it clearly enough that they um, they know they need it. They know they want it. And so I think that was really good uh, takeaway. Is, is in sales, you really just want to show uh, value upfront and you need to like demonstrate and, and prove to them that you know what you're talking about. And then if you're able to show the value, uh, then the rest of the objections kind of go away. And so if you're trying to market yourself, like, I don't know if, if you guys plan on, you know, being a writer or being a, you know, what, whatever kind of marketer you might want to be or entrepreneur, just knowing that how business owners work, they don't care about your resume. You know, they don't, they don't look at anything. They just want results. They want to know that you can bring results. And, and that's really the cool thing about digital marketing is the lifeblood of any kind of business um, is sales. You know, uh, any, any business is going to pay top, top money for a good salesman, a door-to-door -door salesman, a closer, whatever it is. Those guys make a ton of money uh, because that's, that's the whole business is if you have customers, if you have uh, people coming in, calling you all the time uh, for your product, then you have a business. If you don't, then you don't have a business at all. And so that's why marketing is so powerful is because what we do is, is we provide leads. You know, uh, I've, I've sold leads per call. I've, I've done, you know, ranking their own site, doing their own uh, Facebook leads, social media management, whatever it is, there's tons of different avenues, but the bottom line is they, they want sales, they want leads. And so that's what my whole business is, is uh, focused on providing them. So Bryce, just a, a couple things. Uh, and you may, I don't think you did, but you may have, uh, there's several entrepreneurship classes that may not be in, uh, may not know what SEO is. And so first I, I want you to define that, but I do have, I see quite a few of my students from my SEO class. So after oh, yeah. you've defined it, if you could just tell us what, is probably the most, the thing you do the most in SEO for businesses. Cause I do think they would have questions on that as uh, yeah. we, do it. We, we can go over um, a, a basic SEO 101 in five minutes real quick. Uh, let me read other questions. Cool, yeah, let, let me just share my screen. Uh, let's see, and pull up. So does anybody have an example website that we could audit or an example industry that we could look at. Um, all right. Do you guys, are you interested in any 
you know, do we have any like photographers? Do we have any, hey, mechanic, say you're a mechanic, right? Let's let's look up the SEO for mechanic in Laie. And you do, by the way, there's, I'd probably say out of the 40 on here, you probably have 20 that have websites that could. Oh, no way. Review. That's awesome. How do I hide this thing? Can you guys see my uh, screen now? Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, let's pull up. So the main tool that I use, I'm on this site every day, all day. Um, oops. Uh, it's called AREFs or AHREFs. Mechanic, yeah. Laie, Hawaii. Um, so the first thing that happens when somebody pulls up, types in their, you know, if, if I want a mechanic and I don't know one already, you know, word of mouth is great and stuff and referrals. But if I'm going to Google and I type mechanic Laie, Hawaii, the first thing that shows up is this map pack, the Google business listing. And that's the first thing that you need to do if you're starting a business, or even if you don't have a real business, you don't have an LLC or a business license or anything, just make one. It's the easiest thing in the world and it's free to do. And man, how do I hide this? I want to make new tabs. Is there a way to get rid of this little? You can move it down. We can't see it, but I know how it blocks the tabs. So if you just click it and pull it down, you should be able to see your tabs. You're on mute. Uh, so for the Zoom thing, you could just drag. Hello, can you hear me now? Okay, I got it dragged down, now it's fine. <clears throat> I kind of lost what I was talking about for a second, but. Oh yeah, so you have the, when somebody searches, they have mechanic lie. The first thing that comes up is the Google business listing. And this is free to create. You just go to google.com slash business and you fill out all the information. And so that's the first thing you should do if you want to start a business. It doesn't require, you know, like a business listing. You just have to have an address uh, and that's all. Um, when you have an address, they'll send you a postcard. They'll verify that you're in that location and then uh, you get a free listing. And it's super easy to optimize to rank this because a lot of people are going to be calling through, th through this especially in this one, because there's not much competition. But pretty much all you have to do is you look at your competitors, see how many photos they have, and have more photos in them. You want to try to get more reviews than in them. Uh, and then you want to do this thing called citations. I have that on my other computer, actually. So citations are like uh, directories. Every time you get listed in uh, these kind of directories, it builds your business's credibility, and uh, it will rank you higher in the map pack. So if you have a really competitive area, you want to, usually when I'm doing SEO, I'll get 100 to 200 of these citations. And I have a guy in Bangladesh, actually, who, who takes him five minutes to do each one. So it's really cheap for me to, to have him do them. Uh, but yeah, so that's basic SEO for the map pack is citations, getting reviews, uh, making sure you have a lot of images and setting up your business listing correctly. Like you want to have, make sure you have the right categories listed, um, which there's a full list of categories you can look up. And you want to make sure you have the keywords that you're trying to rank for present on the listing so you'll write a business description and you'll try to include the keywords in there uh when even when you name the photos like each time the photo you know you upload it you're going to want to name it as a specific keyword that you're trying to rank for usually the keywords you want to rank for are your uh service that you offer along with the location um so if i'm trying to rank for you know laia hawaii mechanic car mechanic or motorcycle mechanic i'd name those uh, photos as, as those keywords. You just want to have as many keywords present as you can for the on-page. Um, and then for the actual website. So there's a bunch of different things you can do for the website. It looks like Mechanic Laie Hawaii is ridiculously easy from an SEO standpoint because it's not even three map packs. And the top one is Yelp. Yelp is so easy to outrank because it's not a local website. It's a national website. And Google always favors local websites over national if they have the basic SEO done. So the first one you have is, oh, this is also a national or statewide site. Let's look at Organic Mechanics website. You know, I, I kind of doubt that they have any actual good SEO, but we can just look at it anyways, because they have like no competition in North Shore. Okay, so when we look at their website, um, they're currently getting around 76 organic traffic to their site every month. Uh, and they have done almost no off-page SEO. So off-page SEO is, is something called backlinks, um, which I'll talk about in a second. But the first thing 
is really understanding um, the on-page SEO. So how Google works is it's a bot. It goes on your website and it crawls the website and, and it counts all the keywords that you have on the site and it indexes them uh, to figure out what your website is about. It's a really smart bot. You know, it, can, it doesn't have to be an exact match keyword, um, but it counts how many times you use mechanic, for example. Like he uses mechanic five times on that homepage. Uh, and so it knows, Google knows that this is about a mechanic relatively. And so you need to make sure that you have the keywords you're trying to rank for somewhere on your website, especially having the location specific keywords. A lot of uh, websites that I audit, they'll just have um, the service, but they don't have anything tying them to a location. And so Google isn't pulling them up uh, or showing them in the results when someone searches for, you know, photographer in Hawaii because they don't have Hawaii anywhere on their website. Um, so yeah, and then there's a bunch of different ranking factors like uh, that you can go through, you know, but the main ones that people are usually missing is on-page SEO with having the keywords in the content mm -hmm. and having a lot of content. Longer length content ranks better. Uh, usually on the home pages that I create, I try to have at least a thousand words of content on the home, a uh, thousand to 1500. Um, and then you also want to do a bunch of other stuff like making sure that you have the keyword you're trying to rank for. Like for example, if uh, the keyword I was trying to rank for is home mechanic near me, or uh, let's see, this is a really bad example actually. Uh, there's not much. Can I ask you a question? Right? Yeah, sure. Okay, so my question is, uh, hey, you're, using an, you're using their website, but is it possible for you uh, it's a company say uses Facebook or some other social media as their platform for their business. Is, is that the same thing or do you have to have an organic website like that? Yeah. So every, every um, social media platform has its own algorithm and ranking factors. Um, like YouTube, it has, you can do your own SEO for YouTube videos. Uh, YouTube is actually really easy to rank for too on, on Google because Google owns YouTube now. Um, but Facebook, uh, so, so to put it, Facebook pages themselves aren't the best um, for organic outreach and trying to get new leads because how Facebook works, like the organic mechanic, they probably have a Facebook page or your business, it probably has a Facebook page. Uh, and it's great to have a Facebook page for your business for brand credibility you know, because it, it just gives people something to see that you're a legit brand and stuff. Um, and, and I'll always update those. It's a part of my packages. We up, we post on their Facebook every week, you know, just to, to keep maintain it. Um, but out of like, for example, if your business page had a thousand likes on it, only 10% of those people, 10 to 15% of those people are actually being shown your posts. Um, so it's not, and, and then people who don't like your page aren't being shown it at all. Uh, so it's not really good for getting new prospects and getting new leads, which is what the businesses ultimately want. Um, if hopefully that answers your question. But yeah, so essentially there's different SEO tactics for each kind of different um, social media platform, as well as different search engines. So there's a little bit different things you do for Bing and Yahoo versus Google. Um, but most of the, most of my focus is on Google because that's where all of the mo most of the traffic is. Um, I have a question, Bryce. Yeah. So um, when so when you like when you run a marketing company like did you actually like establish a marketing company or are do you still don't have a a company or firm? What do you mean by company? Um, like in order to like um, in order to like do all this stuff for other people like um, do you have to have a company? Yeah, so that's the thing I wanted to say. Um, don't let logistics hold you up for starting a business because <laughs> you can make a lot of money without having to actually start your LLC. Like I, I have a DBA and an LLC now, but I made $30,000 before I had one and you can still work as a sole proprietor. Uh, I mean, I don't, I'm not an accountant, so don't take any of this legal advice as actual legal advice. You need to Google it. <laughs> uh, but essentially don't let it hold you up. A lot of people I know are saying like, Oh, I don't know how to do all this business stuff. So I'm just not going to do anything. But in business, imperfect action is the best kind of action. You can, you know, like I've heard the quote, uh, 20 minutes of doing something is, is better than two, 20 hours of thinking about doing something. And so a lot of people not having the LLC, not having the DBA uh, doing business as is what that is, 
uh, and not knowing exactly how to hire somebody or if I should give them a, if they're a 1099 contractor or if they're a W2 contractor, all those legal stuff, it scares them away and it stops them from starting their business. Uh, I, so I just started my business officially as an LLC uh, on January 1st. So it's only been a month. Um, but for the last, you know, October to December, I got 15 clients and I didn't have any uh, issue with it. But yeah, of course, you want to talk to accountants and do your own research for um, legality uh, reasons. But, but my mentor, I have a mentor as well who does digital marketing. He makes a ton of money and stuff. And I ask him all the time about legality issues and stuff like that, uh, just to make sure I'm not, you know, getting to get audited or sued or something like that. <laughs> yeah. So when you were like new, when you're just starting, like when you were just starting it, like uh, how did you find your customers? Yeah. So I kind of went over that or did I talk about that? Oh, I just talked about educating them. So my, my personal favorite way to get customers right now uh, is because I'm, I'm really busy. I'm training people and managing campaigns and stuff. So I don't really have a lot of time for prospecting. And even though I own a marketing company, I don't really want to invest much money in my own like marketing campaigns for myself because I found a really easy free way to get customers. And that is by offering advice on Facebook groups. So there's, you know, Facebook is such a good tool. Um, even for my last business, like my rental car business, all of my customers only booked through Facebook Messenger. Uh, you know, I did the Facebook marketplace ad, or whatever, and everyone booked through Facebook Messenger and I just had a sheet of who is booked at what time and that's all I did. And it was super easy to market. And right now, uh, I currently, all I do is whenever I scroll on Facebook, I joined 50, like 50 different Facebook groups that are specific to industries. So like there's, uh, let me show you an example, actually. I'm, I'm still sharing my screen, aren't I? Yeah, you are. So let me show you an example of how I'm prospecting. Roofing. Yeah, that one works. <clears throat> so I'll go on these kind of groups and I'll, I'll offer advice. I'll, I mean, people will be asking all the time, like, hey, I need leads. Uh, like, Cause business owners, the lifeblood is leads, especially for high ticket items like roofing, solar, HVAC, you know, they make two to $3,000 per job. And so they're always trying to find new ways to get new customers. And so people will be going on here asking all the time, like, hey, how can I get new customers? And I'll respond to them. I'll comment on their posts, like, hey, here's some tips. Here's how you optimize your Google business listing. Hey, if you need some help, I can audit your website for you. And, and I'll just give them tips on their, on their comments. And then they'll respond to me like, hey, that was really useful. I didn't realize I was missing out on so much stuff. Uh, can you teach me more? Or like, and then I'll send them a message. I'll do a website audit video. And then they'll ask to hire me. So I get them to ask me to help them essentially, because with that positioning, because a lot of the other marketers I work with, they cold call people all day. They just call, go through a business list and they call all the businesses and say, Hey, your website isn't ranking. Do you need help with it? And they'll be like, nah. Uh, and that works sometimes, you know, that's how most of the businesses that I, that I network with are marketing themselves, but I don't do that at all. I've never cold called anyone. All I've done is I just post like this, this is the post I did on January 1st. Hey guys, I, I know everyone is making their goals for this year. Uh, do you, uh, you guys might want to make, you know, do you need some advice for how to get more leads? I'm giving free advice right now. And then uh, I got 40 people to respond and they left me their websites and I did shot them all videos, website audits. And I went through them like, Hey, your website is loading slow. You know, I told them all the things wrong with it. This is what you need to do. This is how you fix it. And then they either take it and use it or they hire me. And that's how I've gotten all my clients so far. Thank you. You. May I may I present like a small comment? Sure. I think it's really interesting how you offer free products pretty much. It's kind of con counterintuitive as to what one would expect when they start a business. You know, you want to get you start a business because you want to gain money. Mm -hmm. But the way you're doing it, it's uh, let me offer you something for free and then you can take it or leave it. I think it's so, I think we undervalue often as students, at least, uh, the value of time, because that's what you're, uh, that's what I feel like you're basically trying to offer them. I can give you more time to do other things if you take this advice or if you let me do it. Yeah, for sure. Because ultimately, like, people hate to be sold to, you know, when I cold call someone and I say, hey, man, your website really sucks, or, or whatever, you know, whatever my line is, hey, man, like, I, I'm a digital marketer, and I wanted to 
you know, out of your side or whatever, they, they think that I'm selling them. And so they are defensive and they don't, they're just trying to get off the phone. Uh, but when it's the other way around, when I make a post or I, or I make a video in one of those groups and say, Hey, here's five ways you can generate leads for yourself for free. And then they, they see me now as a teacher, as a mentor, and uh, I'm offering advice. And so the, the wall, the barrier between somebody trying uh, me as a salesman uh, is gone completely. And then they don't, you know, it just makes the sale so much easier because of the positioning um, that I have with being an educator. Yeah. So value up front is what I was trying to say. You know, you want to give as much value up front as you can. And that tactic is actually called inbound marketing and content marketing underneath that. So if you guys are interested in looking at it in depth, just type in inbound marketing, whereas outbound marketing, what Bryce was talking about, where people are calling, calling and disruptive marketing. Mm -hmm. But you have a couple questions here from the Zoom that I yeah. wanted to throw at you. Um, these two go together. One's from Jason uh, Yamamoto and the other one's from Kai Winchester. And Jason mm -hmm. wanted to know if you could drop the websites that you did the courses for. And uh, Kaya asked, at, at what point after self-studying digital marketing did you feel confident enough to say to businesses that you can get them results and see through your promises? Yeah, good question. Um, so the first course I took um, is called BAM University. This guy, Joshua Osborne. Um, it's a pretty cheesy website, actually, but. But he teaches uh, all in country. Th this guy, I, I, I should give a pitch for him. He's really good. So it, uh, I'll do it a little bit afterwards. He does something called lead generation websites, uh, which is another really cool business opportunity uh, that that I've been doing a lot to create assets. Um, but that was the first one I did. And to be honest, I was pretty nervous about bringing in results uh, for my first client, especially because the first client I wasn't doing, I, I was still working full time. And I only had virtual assistants doing the fulfillment. Um, so it was, it was pretty nerve wracking. I wouldn't even know if we could build a website, but, but that's the thing. Like, I feel like um, you'll always be able to do the fulfillment. You, you can figure out a way to make your promises happen. You know, even if, even if it costs me money, I'm gonna, I'll either hire another digital marketing agency to help me and white label it. Cause there's tons of white label services uh i don't know if you guys know what white label is but it's essentially like a ghost writer you know where they they do the work and you do the sales like i could do that if i ended up failing um but but pretty much my my mentor i just have him joshua osborne the guy that i just pulled up uh he, he's been doing marketing for a long time and i have another mentor and his name is william um he teaches he's been doing digital marketing for 20 years and i just follow the same steps steps that they do and i do it exactly how they teach it and they've been ranking websites for 20 years now. And so as long as I'm following the same processes, you just trust the process works and then it, it works really well. So <laughs> just as long as you have a good mentor and a good teacher and you're learning really, really good knowledge, uh, then I feel like you don't have to worry too much about it failing because you just trust the process. But, but on the same way to go along with that, there's so much information about SEO online. So just, just trying to study by yourself you're, you're going to have this thing called like the shiny syndrome or shiny object syndrome, where you just see another course and you decide you want to take it. Like for like oh, two weeks, I just started buying every course I saw, you know, I was Facebook algorithms, favorite customer. Cause I was buying everything. It was awful, you know, but, but I'm, but I'm good now. Like I I've gotten really better at figuring out what is quality information and I've tested it myself. You know, I'll see like, Oh, these, these things, these ranking factors really, really matter. Uh, you know, these high authority domain, uh, backlinks or whatever it is, you know, and I'll, I'll see the difference between a site that doesn't have it versus a site that does. Um, so now I'm pretty confident in my abilities, but yeah, for the first three or four months, uh, I was pretty nervous. Um, but to be honest, like SEO is a long-term thing. And so you have a while to figure it out. Like they're not expecting results for six months. Most of the time, uh, most of the time ranking a website from zero to to number one, it's going to take six months to a year for the more competitive markets that I'm working in, which my markets are pretty competitive. It's roofing and, and HVAC, like are my biggest uh, customers. But my tree service and lawn care to customers, those are super easy to rank. And I've always ranked them in like less than two months. So it's been really nice. <laughs> 
So Taffy's got a question for you on uh, the type of extensions you use for your SEO. See, yeah, let me show you. Um, let's look. So one of the extensions that I've been using a lot today, I've been doing audits for the Google business listings. Uh, so there's this thing called GMB Spy. Oops. So when I click on a Google business listing, I click on GMB Spy and it tells me all of the uh, subcategories that that business has. So this guy, Organic Mechanic, is only listed as mechanic. So that's kind of a lame example. So let's look up another thing. But pounders. Pounders. No, it's a restaurant. That's only going to have restaurant. But, um, but like AC, see like this. If it's set up correctly, they should have multiple business listings, the business category. So when I'm giving people advice, I'll be like, hey, I can take a look at your website, your Google business listing and see if it's set up correctly. And for example, the guy I audited this morning, he was a roofer, but he was listed as a general contractor. And so when somebody searched for roofer, uh, Illinois, he didn't show up at all because his category didn't even have the subcategory as roofer. And he'd been in business for four years, you know, and he's never shown up in the map pack ever. Like what the freak, how come nobody taught him this, you know? It just blows my mind how like nobody just how he how he went so long without ever having the right category, and so but then we fixed it and like you know he's he's probably going to show up really well because he has a ton of reviews he's just not listed as a roofer, and so yeah so that that one's a really good one I also have this one I use all the time it's a color picker it'll tell me exactly the code of whatever color I'm doing for like graphic design etc I have SEO Quake keywords everywhere that kind of tells me like it, it's a website auditor kind of things. Like for example, if I click on any website, what I did a second ago, analyze this page, it will tell you the word count. There's a lot of, there's tons of tools. I could go on for like an hour about tools actually. Uh, so maybe I shouldn't just keep talking about random tools that I use, but uh, yeah, there's like page speed testers and word counters. It'll tell you all the words on a website, you know, cause you want to have more words. There's all sorts of stuff. <clears throat> and most, all of them are free. You know, the only, the only mm. tools that I pay for is I pay for this one. This one costs 150 bucks a month, it's kind of expensive, but I use it all the time. So it's great. And, and white spark is the other one I use a lot. This, this tool, it, it tells you how many citations that each business has it costs 20 bucks a month. Not too bad. Um, uh, for reference, Bryce, is it possible for you to provide like a, I don't know, someone might be able to compile for you a document that just shows some of the sites that you use and why you would use them sort of thing. Just yeah, I can send you that. I mean, I, I have a, a while ago, I, I made a list of all of them, but uh, I can, I don't want to dig through my notes to find it. If you had a website and a blog, you could publish it there. And <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Right? That probably, would just save your problem. I, uh, I so Sungjin has a question for you on understanding the relationship between SEO and UX UI. Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. Let, let me show you. Can I? So this is a document that I have for my sales calls. Um, so this is my ROI calculator. Um, and man, why are these things always in the way? Uh, so for example, this is a roofing website guy. This guy was my newest client. I, I signed him on this week. Uh, and he is in Georgia um, and he has, he's willing to work in these small towns all around him. And each one of these towns has keywords that has high search. So this is the search volume for all of the keywords. And this is the difficulty and the total volume for all the keywords we're gonna try to rank for is 5,920. It's pretty high. We're not gonna obviously rank for all of those. Um, but for example, if within three months we're able to traf capture the traffic of 5% of that amount of keywords, uh, usually if I'm ranked number one for a keyword, I'll get about 30% of the traffic capture. Uh, we, we're not gonna be able to rank for all of those at once, of course, because unless he has a huge budget, which he doesn't have. But um, so for example, 5% of this traffic capture would be 296 traffic per month uh, to his website. And then this, that's where the UX comes in, the, the user experience and, and how it converts. So having things like uh, an ad on there that says, hey, limited time, um, $200 off your next roof replacement or some kind of offer that makes a really big difference on conversions. Uh, right now, my average conversion is a little bit less than 10%. It's, it's like, it's like 7.5% for my roofing 
customers, uh, which is pretty good. Um, so 296, 8% of those become leads. That would be 22 per month, 22 roofing leads per month. And then I ask him, uh, hey man, how, what's your closing ratio? How many are you closing? And it'll be like, oh, about 40% or whatever. And so that means nine clients from SEO uh, per month. And so then I'll ask him, how much do you make per client? And he'll be like, oh, it's 2,500 bucks. And then I right, like, okay, so then the lead value, nine people times 2,500 is $22,000 uh, a month. And then, then we go into the ROI. So I'm going to charge you 650 for a website, $600 for monthly SEO. This is your ROI, projected ROI, you know, but all of these are different factors. You know, if you, if you're able to increase the conversion, uh, if, I mean, you're in, able to increase the closing ratio or whatever, then it'll go up. If you're able to increase the, the UI and the UX, like the, the user inter interface and making sure that it, it's all clean, it loads quickly, uh, it has a good offer, it has lots of click to call buttons and lots of call to action buttons. You know, actually, uh, yeah, I think we actually finished this is website this morning. So yeah, we, we just started, this is list, this is one of my fastest turnarounds actually. So we, I signed this client uh, like a week ago and we already pretty much finished his website. I have to do a little bit more, but, but like having click to call buttons all over the place, call buttons that helps with, um, converting the website, uh, having reviews on the homepage, free inspections, lots of call to actions all over the place and making sure it loads quickly, et cetera. Those are all um, super, super important. But yeah, so also that's what I wanted to talk about. The ROI on SEO is just phenomenal. Like, uh, you know, if this, especially for high ticket items, I should be charging a lot more than six, like $600 a month. This guy's brand new, so he doesn't have a huge budget. And I explained to him, like, it's going to take longer because you only have a $600 a month. Uh, budget. So maybe after, you know, six months, we're only getting 2%. But then uh, as we continue to work on backlinking to different keywords, you're going to increase and, you know, eventually, hopefully you're at, at to 10% of the traffic capture. And then that you'll see how that the initial SEO affects the bottom line of your sales and your annual revenue. If that makes sense. Any so, other questions? Uh, Azrael, well, on the SEO and UX, so the user experience, how much do you feel the user experience plays in to SEO? Uh, yeah, so like the click-through rating is one of the SEO factors. So if, if you have a really high bounce rate, which is where they click onto your site and they immediately leave, um, your SEO ranking is going to plummet like really bad. Uh, so you need to have people staying on your site and you can track it on, on the different tools. Like uh, th they have something called Google Search Console, which tells you how long your website uh, how long they're staying on your website and who clicks the click through rate, et cetera. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's super important. If, if they're not, if they're not staying on your website and enjoying the website and reading the content, you know, if, if you have like a clickbait meta tag is what they're called, and then they get on their site and they realize, oh, it's not what I'm looking for, then you're going to drop in rankings uh, super bad because Google's ultimate goal is to show the websites to the people who are looking for them. They want to match the good websites to the good, to the right users. And so if you're, if everyone's leaving your website immediately then Google thinks, oh, you're not a good site for these kind of people. So it's going to drop you in rankings. If that makes sense. So Azrael, she has another question on how you came up with your pricing. Yeah. So my mentor, he charges way more than I do, like crazy amounts, you know, like, like he, he won't take a client for less than $5,000 a month. And I, I, most of my clients are like, as you see, 600, 400, you know, whatever. And, but it's okay. Cause right now I want to get testimonials. I want to build uh, a bunch of social proof in every industry, every industry. I want to be like, Hey, I've ranked roofers. I've ranked plumbers. I've ranked HVAC. I've ranked, you know, I want to show that I have people ranking number one on a bunch of different industries. And so I'm charging as much as it costs me. I do it at cost. Uh, but essentially my basic pricing, I mean, Partially because I'm, I'm advertising this way on Facebook groups. Um, the reason uh, a lot of the time my prospects are people who are just starting out. They're people who are on Facebook looking for advice. And so they're new in the business. They're not people who are super seasonal. Uh, so in the future, as I get more uh, social, social proof and showing that I'm, I'm, I have a bunch of different already ranked sites. And as I, uh, you know, get more referrals, I'll probably increase my pricing uh, to actually make better profit margins. But as of now, I, I just, I, I know my, my profit margins, it usually costs me $250 of link building uh, if the per month, 
for the keyword difficulty of 10 to 15. Uh, that, that's how, how competitive that those keywords are. And, and I know that like, I have to pay my employees this month, this amount for social media marketing and, and managing the Google business listings, et cetera. So I just kind of have the base cost per client. And, and then a lot of my employees, um, they work per project. They're 10 to 9, 99 contractors. They're not full-time like employees. So a lot of the time I'll just upcharge like one to two, uh, a little bit, you know, 20% off of whatever uh, it's costing me. Like for example, right now I'm writing, uh, before this call, I was uh, editing content for a, another website. It was actually a personal trainer's website uh, from somebody from BYU Provo. And I, I have a content writer who's also a BYU alumni. She's, her name's Anisha. I don't know if you guys knew her. Uh, she was graduated four years ago or whatever, but she, she's a content writer for me. And um, I pay her three cents per word and I charge the client uh, four cents per word. So I get one extra cent per word, you know? So I'm just making one cent per word of content that we have on their website. And then, but I usually have to do some content editing myself too. So I'm not really charging these people a ton. I'm not a millionaire, you know, I haven't made it. I don't know why Brother Wilson wanted me to talk because I'm not, you know, rich and famous by any means. That's, uh, that's the reason why I wanted, what I love, and I've always loved this about Bryce is he's a doer. He goes and gets it done. You know, there's so many entrepreneur students who they come across a pebble in their journey and they're like, oh, I, I can't go forward. And as you can see with Bryce, he goes around, over, under, whatever to, to make it work. So yeah, no, you're the exact type of person I want. Like maybe if you talk to me in a year, I'll be making thirty thousand dollars a month or something like that. But right now, I'm, 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 my wife's mad at me all the time because a lot of the time I'll just do stuff for free for people. Be like, hey man, your 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 Google stuff sucks. Like, let me just help you, (laughs) and I'll just do it for free for a lot of stuff. You know, if it's if it's just my time or like one of my employees' time, Uh, there's other things I have to pay for. Like like for example, backlinks, Uh, guest post. I don't want to get it into too much technical stuff for SEO, but like guest posts cost money, you know, sometimes for, ah, that's too technical, whatever. Some of the stuff I do, it costs money. <laughs> and so I have to make sure I'm covering my expenses. Um, but that's pretty much all I do. I just cover my expenses plus an extra 20% profit. And that's enough for me right now. And, and then over time, I'll, I'll work I'll, with you. Who? Your wife, Desiree. Does she no, work? I wish it'd be so great. She's always busy with school. She always has homework. She, she studied accounting and she, she just got a job as a accounting intern for Sigma. So uh, hopefully she's, she's going to get that going for her and then she'll get her CPA and then I'll have her do my accounting. Cause my accounting sucks. Like I have just this huge Excel sheet and it's awful. <laughs> so we have a few minutes left. Uh, Joseph wanted to ask, he said, how did you select your Facebook groups again? Like he just wanted clarity on that one. Oh, for, for prospecting? Yeah. I, I just joined them all. <laughs> I just, it doesn't cost money, you know? I just, whatever industries I was in, I, I, I kind of know a little bit about roofing because I'd gotten trained by this one roofing company that I worked for for one week. So I was like, oh, roofing's got really good profit margins. So I'm going to do that one. And then uh, I joined a bunch of HVAC because I heard that was really good profit margins and a bunch of tree service ones because that was a ton of profit margins. So I just chose the industries I felt like working in and uh, joined those ones. Oh, that's the last thing. I wanted to talk to you guys about uh, lead generation. So um, the first course I took from Joshua Osborne, um, his his course is all about rank and rent, where you rank websites and then rent them out to people, uh, which is super cool because I I really loved my initial businesses because I was renting out an asset. You know, I had cars or I had a camper van and it was passive income. And so that's what I want now too. I want to have my employees be able to function well enough with this business. I don't have to be actively managing and, and actively participating all the time. I want to have freedom. You know, that's my ultimate goal. But the, the way to find that kind of freedom uh, in this business so far, what I found is, is something called a lead generation. So you'll build a website, for example, uh, let me show you a website I built. So this economy. So this, this is a website we built, you know, just for fun. And just because on AREFs, we saw that they had super high search volume and super low competition. We were like, the search volume is like 400 a month for tree, tree removal, tree trimming, uh, but nobody's going for it online. No, none of the tree service guys are, are making nice websites. So I built the website, I optimized it, I ranked it. And then uh, people are calling it 
all the time. I, I get probably two calls a day asking for tree trimming. Um, and so once I got my first call to the website, I just called all the people. I, I went on Facebook groups actually. And I looked at who's advertising on Facebook Messenger for tree trimming and tree service. And I messaged them. He's like, hey, I got some leads for tree trimming. Uh, I, I was just looking for somebody who can who can help me service them. And then be like, oh yeah, sure. And so I'll give him a week free of, of calls from the website. And then after that, I'll be like, all right, well, I want to partner and get some kind of you know partnership going. Would you be willing to pay $25 per call? I'll be like, oh yeah, sure. Because HomeAdvisor charges $55 per call. So I'm cutting HomeAdvisor in half. And HomeAdvisor sells the leads to five to seven clients, uh, to this, to five to seven other businesses. I don't know if you guys know about Home Advisor, but they suck. They're the worst. And so, but I'm I'm selling the leads exclusively to him. He he gets all the leads and all the phone calls uh, only to him, and he's paying half the price with less competition. And so the guy is super happy. You know, he's like, wow, like my business is busier than ever. And then I'll, I'll be like, oh, dude, you paid me, you know, eight hundred dollars last month because there was this many leads, and it looks like we're getting more leads every month. How about instead of paying $800 paying per lead and having to figure out how many leads were good and which ones were just spammy calls or whatever and tracking all that stuff. How about we just cut down the price to $500 a month and felt that rate, you can have all the leads for the, every month. And they'll be like, oh yeah, sure, that's awesome. And then it saves them $300 a month from compared to the last month. And, and then we don't have to worry about tracking the calls and I don't have to listen in to all the calls to make sure they're good and stuff. And so then uh, I, I now have an asset. It's like I have an apartment that I'm renting on Airbnb, except for I don't have to do any upkeep. You know, I just have to make sure it continues to stay ranked. But I chose this spot and this location because it's so non-competitive. Nobody else is trying to rank in Lexington for tree service. And so I don't have to do any work. You know, I might have to throw a backlink on every six months or something like that. But essentially the SEO part, once it's ranked, it's done. And I, I just sell the leads and collect the checks every month without having to do additional work. And so that kind of asset building is super, super powerful. And that, that's what I want to get transition more into in the future. I kind of needed money immediately because I have to pay bills and stuff. So I've been doing SEO, which gives you cash quick because you get websites and, you know, monthly revenue. But in the future, I want to start building out uh, more lead generation sites for industries that don't really know or invest very much in, in SEO, like tree service. Tree service guys just never get around to building websites. So and then I can, I can sell the website to him too. You know, if I really like, like, Hey man, you've been renting for me for a year. I'll sell it to you this much, whatever, you know, and it's, it's, a, a, it's, a, it's another way to give value up front because then they don't have to believe in you and think, Oh yeah, I'm going to pay you money for six months. And then it's going to rank like, no, I, I have calls right now. You know, it, the value is there immediately. But yeah. Sorry. Oh, I'm missing. Yeah, I know. And unfortunately, we we're at the end of the hour. Bryce was worried about the hour long, like if he would be able to fill it. And I don't think that's a concern at all. Uh, but I want to thank you, Bryce. Like, I, you're the exact type of speakers that we like to have come in because it shows the students you haven't been out of school that long. And you are right at the beginning and you're getting it done. So uh, kudos on that. Uh, you want to end with Jem's last question there? Oh, yeah. Sorry. What was the question? But she's saying, are you really good at innovating business ideas? Do you think an app that could automatically help more clients could be possible in the future? Automatically help more clients with, uh, with what? There's so many things apps can do. Um, like for SELs, uh, do you think you, you could like go on that direction of instead of just doing it alone or with like other people or with your employees, do you think um, you would go on a direction of maybe doing, making, creating an app for that? Yeah, maybe. I mean, I, I know a lot of other SEO businesses that have apps uh, and there's so many great benefits for them. I, I, I was talking to a guy earlier today about partnering, doing an affiliate program uh, that has an app where uh, it's, it's to generate reviews and stuff like that. Like, uh, the business owner pays 50 bucks a month, hundred bucks a month. And then every time they service a customer, they are able to text the customer a link to the review because getting reviews on Google is, is super hard sometimes. And so that would, that also helps rank their SEO and it, it also helps, you know, it helps has business management tools in the app. So apps are super good and there's so many different things you can do uh, with apps. You know, some customers, they, they want to have their own app for their business. So their customers can log in and uh, pay for things. Um, that's, that's also something that, I've thought about, but it's not something I want to pursue anytime soon. I don't, I've got my hands full just trying to not, you know, survive. I, I'm so busy. It's crazy. <laughs> I, I don't have time for anything. So it kind of sucks, but, 
But hopefully, you know, as I get my systems in place, I'll have more time to explore more avenues and maybe maybe app development or other kind of uh, innovating things would be super cool to look into. Well, we'll definitely have to have you back again. And just as you update us with everything, if students have more questions, what's the best way uh, for them to ask them to you? Uh, yeah, you can just message me on Facebook. I'm on Facebook all the time because I prospect there. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you again, Bryce. Uh, we'll let everyone go, but I just, I honestly can't express enough gratitude for your time. And, and like you said, it's life is pretty crazy. So, but thanks everybody. Yep. Thanks for the questions. It was fun. Thank you again, Bryce. Thank yep. you, Bryce. Thank you so much, Bryce. Thank you, Bryce. Thanks, Bryce. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Hit the corn. <laughs> hey thank you so much bryce yeah thanks guys thank you for your time i hope you have a good day yeah you too